Strange Adventure. Brett Davis looked solemnly at the tall mountains that hemmed in the little camp. Ollie Crane, the other timber cutter, tried to cheer up his pal. Hey, snap out of it. We'll be finished clearing this tract in a couple of weeks. Then we get back to civilization. Ah, uh, no. The loneliness of the place gets me. Nobody for miles around but the Roonies. And they're not too sociable. Say, don't forget Mike over there. He wouldn't like it if you said he wasn't sociable. Don't forget old man Rooney gave him to us for company. <laughs> Ollie pointed to a huge yellow cat asleep just inside the tent. Say, speaking of the Roonies, he hasn't showed up for a few days. We better check check up on him. We better, well, we better ride over to his house and see what's wrong. Later, Brett and Larry paid a visit to the Rooney cabin. It was a strange sight that met their eyes as they entered the squalid home. Tim Rooney lay sprawled upon the floor, motionless as death. His haggard wife knelt at his side, staring at him, speechless with fear. Brett helped her to her feet, while Ole lifted Rooney and carried him into the bedroom. A moment later, he returned. He's alive, but he won't last long. Must be heart trouble. Brett helped the woman to a chair, where she sat staring vacantly into space. Ole started toward the door. Uh, Rooney's buckboard is back of the house. I'll drive into town and see if I can find a doctor. Brett, you stay here and watch after Mrs. Rooney. The afternoon faded into darkness and Brett settled down for the long night's vigil. A kerosene lamp tried vainly to light the almost bare room. Rooney's wife huddled in her chair, seemingly asleep. Suddenly, from out of the surrounding shadows came the sound of purring. Brett thought of the yellow cat and wondered if it was in the cabin. He carried the lamp into the bedroom where Rooney lay, but still could find no trace of the cat. He searched the cabin, but in vain. It seemed only a moment later when he heard a slow, ominous growling. He went outside, calling softly, but there was still no cat to be found. Dawn was breaking when Brett heard the returning buckboard and dashed outside to welcome Larry and the doctor. The three men rushed into the cabin. The bedroom door was open, and from inside came a loud, purring sound. When the men entered the room, they came upon a fearful sight. Crouched beside the bed, Mrs. Rooney glared at her husband as he huddled against the wall in stark staring fear. And as she crouched, the woman purred like a huge cat. The purring changed into a savage growl. Then, with clutching bony hands, she sprang straight at Rooney's throat. The men grabbed at the mad woman. At last, she was subdued and fell into a frightened sobbing. Her husband helped to soothe her, speaking to her softly. He then turned to the doctor and the young men. Gentlemen, I suffer from catalepsy. That is why you thought I was dead. I love my wife in spite of the fact that she's been insane for 15 years, gentlemen. Insane ever since she was scared and bitten by a yellow cat. This is Pat McGee in Hollywood, California, saying goodbye from my writer, Charles Crowder, and inviting you to tune in again to another tale of Strange Adventure.